John Stewart had some thoughts here on Hillary Clinton, and perhaps unsurprisingly, it's not all puppies and rainbows. I think about Hillary Clinton as, uh, you know, I imagine to be a very bright woman without the courage of her convictions, because I'm not even sure what they are. So I, I would suggest that when I watch her campaign, when I watch her campaign, it reminds me of, and again, I'm throwing out references that mean absolutely nothing to anybody. So I, I will continue to do that. Uh, she reminds me of Magic Johnson's talk show. <laughs> and I won't say anything. Yeah, you have that thought too, huh? If you ever watch Magic Johnson's talk, Magic Johnson was a charming individual, but he wasn't a talk show host. And when you watched his show, you could almost see Arsenio's advice to him in real time rendering. So he would sit and he would go, uh, my first guest tonight, oh, Arsenio said enthusiasm is something that Sal is, uh, my first guest tonight is, share everybody. <laughs> but it never seemed authentic and real to his personality. It seemed like he was wearing uh, an outfit designed uh, by someone else for someone else to be someone else. And that is not to say that she is not preferable to Donald Trump, because at this point, I would vote for Mr. T over Donald Trump. <laughs> but, but she will, I think she will be in, in big trouble if she can't find a way and, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe a real person doesn't exist underneath there. Good googly moogly. <laughs> Those are some tough words. And I think he's right. You know, when I look at Hillary Clinton, what I see is a shapeshifter. Whatever room she's in front of, she's going to tailor her message to that room. So flip-flopping in her mind is not an issue. Uh, I see a narcissist. I see that she's power-hungry. In fact, that's the overwhelming sense I get as to why she's running for president. She wants the glory associated with it without necessarily doing the hard work in terms of policy substance and really being in it for the right reasons. And I think most importantly here, and he didn't really touch on this, but I think given enough time, he probably would have because he seems like he gets it. Uh, she is the establishment. There is no politician who is more quintessential establishment than... Hillary Clinton. She's a Washington insider through and through. I mean, we've spoken about this before, but the way that she's gotten endorsements has been super suspect because uh, what she'll do is it's carrots and sticks. She'll cut deals behind closed doors and she'll let people know, hey, look, you know, if you do the right thing, you go on my good list. You do the wrong thing, you go on my bad list and you don't want to be on that bad list. Whereas uh, Bernie Sanders, for example, you get the sense that when he gets endorsements, it's because people just listen to his message and they go, I'm going to endorse that guy because he's right. Whereas Hillary does make those backroom deals and uh, does make it so that, hey, if slash when I'm in power, I return the favor. So you got to remember that. So this is why you have, for example, uh, former civil rights legends who have endorsed Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. It's not because her record is better, because there's literally not a single argument that can be made that her record is better. Bernie's is significantly better. When Hillary Clinton was a Goldwater girl back in the day, supporting a candidate who was for segregation, you had Bernie Sanders who was literally doing civil rights protests, and he got arrested for it, and he marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There's no question here. There's no... It, for people to try to pretend like it's an open thing, like, that's just massively disingenuous or it's ignorant. We know that Bernie's record is significantly better. It's not an issue. It's not even close. So, former civil rights legends endorsing Hillary is because they're both political insiders at this point, and it's, hey, I scratch your back, you scratch mine, this is how it works. And that's why Hillary has such high unfavorables, and people just don't fucking trust her. They look at her and they go, I, I don't like you, I don't trust you, something's wrong, because something is wrong. And again, the facts bear this out, so this doesn't, this isn't born out of personal animus and, and dislike of Hillary, because... Look, man, she's the Democratic candidate. You don't think I want to be uh, in love with the Democratic candidate and pushing for the Democratic candidate big time over the Republican candidate? Of course I want to be. But it just so happens that she's taken so much money from Wall Street and her votes have been influenced. Elizabeth Warren tells that story about how at one point Hillary Clinton was against 
a bankruptcy bill that massively biased the rules in favor of corporations. Then after she became senator and took so much money from Wall Street and the financial institutions, she flipped her vote and then she supported the bankruptcy bill that was rigged in their favor. And the list goes on and on. We've given so many examples. Her uh, single payer pivot, pivot, <laughs> flip flop, uh, was uh, influenced by money from the health insurance companies and the health industry. So she used to be in favor of single payer after she started taking gargantuan amounts of money uh, from the health industry. All of a sudden, over time, she flipped. That's not a fucking coincidence, man. It's not like she sat down and said, okay, let me let me look at these policies and try to determine which one is going to be best for the constituents in, in uh, Spokane. No, she, she got the money and she knows this is the way the system works. So now... Uh, I will do what they want as well. I will flip and I will do what the donors want. And by the way, don't get me wrong. I think she rationalizes it. So in other words, she'll take the money from the health insurance industry. And then what she'll do is she'll do like the old Obama move. Oh, we have a big tent. We need to represent everybody. Therefore, not only will I represent my constituents and the people, I will also represent the industry. But no, you shouldn't. One of them you're supposed to crack down on and regulate and make sure they don't fuck over your constituents. The other one are just your constituents. You're supposed to represent them. But under the guise of a big tent, you go, oh, I'll appease the industry and I'll help out my constituents. And that's how they rationalize it. Obamacare is a perfect example of that. Hey, let's do a proposal that the health insurance companies by and large like, and also the people will get more uh, covered more. Now, it's not still universal health care, so we should all be upset that it didn't go all the way. But they say, hey, I did enough, didn't I? See, a progressive who likes to get things done, namely by selling out to a certain extent to corporations, to Wall Street, to the industry. Remember, between Hillary and Bill, they've raised over $3 billion in speaking fees alone in their careers. No, I'm sorry. It's $3 billion in their entire career, over $100 million in speaking fees alone. The over $100 million, that went right into their pockets. They're raising over $3 billion. That's for everything. That's for the Clinton Foundation, which is super questionable. And remember, Hillary did deals when she was Secretary of State for people who donated to the Clinton Foundation, namely Saudi Arabia and other countries who got weapons deals. But that includes donations to the Clinton Foundation. That includes to their campaigns, to their super PACs, to them personally. So when you tally up everything, it's over $3 billion. You don't think she's going to return favors to all the people who gave her money? She's the quintessential insider. Of course she is. And this, uh, I come full circle all the way back to John Stewart's point. Dude, that's why she's out there and she seems like a shell of a human being. Because she is. Because she has so many allegiances and alliances to big moneyed interests that, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to do? You, okay, now you have to go out there and parrot and pretend like you've been fighting for just your the people all along. Well, that's not the case. Bernie has been. So he gets out there, he seems authentic because he is authentic. And he's like, these are, I want single payer, universal health care. We need universal college. This is what we need in America. And you go, that guy's telling the truth. That guy believes it. Whereas Hillary's like, you know, half the time, yeah, we need to somehow cover everybody. And then, no, we can't do single payer, though. And half the time she says she's more progressive than Bernie, which makes no sense. The other half the time she says she's more moderate. She contradicts herself ad nauseum. And she makes a joke of herself. Like, for example, remember when Bernie said, uh, you represented Wall Street. And what was her response? 9-11. Yeah, I represented them because I was in New York during 9-11. Everybody was like, whoa, what the fuck did you just say? You crazy person. I mean, how disconnected do you have to be from reality to make that argument as if you're nailing it? But that's Hillary Clinton. Let me say what I have to say to get elected, put on this veneer of being progressive right now, and then the second she has the opportunity because she feels like she's already in the general, what does she do? She doesn't court Bernie voters who aren't too hot on her. She doesn't care about them because she thinks they're going to fall in line anyway. What does she do? She courts Bush donors. We covered the story the other day. And she says, I represent your values better than Donald Trump. So don't take it from me, take it from her. You know, before she was a progressive who likes to get things done. And before she said, I go tougher on Wall Street than Bernie. Now all of a sudden that we're in the general, she calls Bush donors on Wall Street and says, I represent your values. So everything John Stewart said was uh, right here. She seems disingenuous and she seems like there's not a real person under the facade because she is disingenuous and there isn't a real person under the facade.